Hello everybody, I thought I would do a video about the long wave broadcast band here in Europe. Now this video is unrehearsed and unscripted and I'm going to try to do it all in one take or at least with very minimal editing. If I make any mistakes or forget to mention something important I will include a note to that effect in the video description. I will also include hyperlinks to websites and other YouTube videos of interest as well. This video is likely to be rather long so if you have a problem with patience as I know some people do from comments on my previous YouTube videos then tune away now and do something more interesting with your life you have been warned. This video has been inspired by a video published on the 10th of September 2022 on the Coastal Waves and Wires YouTube channel. That belongs to Walt Kilo 4 Oscar Golf Oscar, who is a fellow radio amateur. He is located in the USA and his channel, all the videos on his channel, are well worth a watch. But recently Walt visited Central Europe, Poland, to do with his work and whilst there he bought uh, an analog radio analog in both senses the dial was analog so there was a little pointer that went along the scale and he did a video called uh, long wave dxing in europe in the us and canada long wave broadcasting does not exist over there those frequencies are used for um, non-directional beacons to do with aviation. Um, some experimenters put uh, microscopic powered beacon transmitters on the air for experimenting but whatever else it might be used for it is not used for broadcasting. So I hope this video will be of interest in particular to people living outside of ITU Region 1 where long wave is not used for broadcasting. The radio you're looking at is a Sanjian ATS 909. I bought this from new uh, in about 2007-2008 oh, and despite it showing its age there's a crack along the top, the telescopic antenna is a bit bent the stand on the back of it has snapped off. Even so, for a radio its age, it performs very well even today, especially considering that there haven't been many days where I haven't had it switched on for uh, half an hour a day, um, if not indeed many hours per day. And in the last 10 days or so since uh, Queen Elizabeth died, as you can imagine, the radio has been switched on rather a lot. In my opinion, this is the best radio I own for long wave reception. I also own uh, the follow up to this, the Sanjian ATS 909X, and I've also got a Texan PL660. In my opinion, to my ear, this one, the 909, is the best of the lot for long wave reception. Not by much, but if you are trying to listen to an extremely weak signal, um, a very small difference could make the difference between the signal being listenable as opposed to merely detectable. The other thing I should mention is that I'm on holiday this week in Nottingham, which is more or less the dead centre of England I think about uh, 120 miles northwest of London and um, from my usual home location on the south coast it's uh, 195 miles by road so long wave reception here could vary slightly compared to what I get on the south coast but probably not by much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a band scan I'm going to go through each frequency in turn 
Uh, it's just gone five o'clock local time when I'm recording this, so it's still light outdoors. I'll then do another band scan at the end of this video with less talking once darkness has fallen to see if that makes much of a difference. The long wave band is usually a lot more susceptible to interference than say for example the medium wave band or the AM broadcast band as you would know it in the States because it's lower in frequency. If a thunderstorm is happening in the distance the crackles that you will hear on long wave will be louder than the equivalent crackles on medium wave and they will probably start sooner and disappear later as well compared to the medium wave broadcast band that's higher in frequency. However it doesn't always work that long wave will be full of interference whereas higher bands such as the FM broadcast band will offer crystal clear reception. We're staying in a terraced house. There is something close to here and I don't think it's something in the house that we're renting. I think it's in one of the adjacent ones that puts out so much interference it completely wipes out the FM broadcast band. I'm not going to do it here because it probably wouldn't come up very well on the camera but I could tune across the entirety of the FM broadcast band with the telescopic antenna fully extended and hear no stations at all but with 100% signal strength on the S meter here and I would hear nothing, not even a weak FM signal. Um, I will leave it to your imagination as to what possibly could be causing that. Um, I think it's also causing interference to our over-the-air TV reception. Um, I know my wife has had trouble making and receiving mobile phone calls in some rooms but not others and um, the internet has also been dropping out periodically as well which may or may not be coincidental. Anyway that's not the subject of this video. So in Europe the long wave broadcast band goes from 153 kilohertz up to 279 kilohertz with 9 kilohertz spacing with each frequency being directly divisible by 9. The same applies incidentally in Europe to the medium wave AM broadcast band. I will talk not only about what is on the frequencies now but also what I remember hearing on them in the past and I would say I've been listening to long wave fairly regularly since probably the early to mid 1990s. So I'll turn the radio on and we will start on 153 kilohertz. The only station I've ever heard on this frequency and that I ever hear now is Antenna Satellor from Romania. That is usually easily identifiable because they play a lot of very distinctive Romanian and traditional folk music. As far as I know the transmitters on the air 24 hours a day I have only ever heard it at home after dark and on the occasions I have heard it I would describe the signal as detectable rather than listenable. Two comments about this. Um, earlier in 2022 in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and I'm not going to call it a, a special military operation and an invasion and an illegal war by any other name is still the same thing. In the aftermath of that starting uh, the powers that be in Romania started broadcasting a speech radio station on 153 kilohertz possibly with a few news bulletins in Ukrainian because I would imagine that with the transmitter and I, I think it's one of the more powerful ones in the uh, the megawatts league rather than the kilowatts league possibly I would think that it puts a reasonably good signal into Ukraine um, so for a couple of months there was speech on there rather than music latterly they have reverted back to the traditional Romanian folk music 
However, if uh, there are events developing in Ukraine, they may well switch it back to a speech-based service. Second thing to mention is that you may hear English voices on that frequency from 1053 kilohertz. At home in West Sussex, I live 10 miles away from a transmitter that carries talk sport on 1053 kilohertz with around 2.1 kilowatts EMRP uh, effective radiated power relative to a monopole. So it is a very strong signal talk sport at home. Without going too much into the way radios work and intermediate frequencies and all that kind of thing, this radio and others, it's not exclusive to this one, can on occasions um, produce an image signal of talk sport on this frequency. So if you hear English voices talking about football, then you are not hearing Romania. The next frequency up is 162 kilohertz. Now, up till a few years ago, this transmitted France Inter, uh, which is a prominent national radio station in France. They're also on FM. Towards the end, the FM and long wave services were essentially the same uh, up until, I don't know, 2010, somewhere around there. Uh, or maybe before, the long wave service did opt out sometimes, particularly at weekends, to carry um, football match commentary. That subsequently shifted to, it was either France Bleu or France Info, can't remember which. But right up until the end, just before France Inter closed on long wave, they were broadcasting very occasionally a shipping forecast La Météo Marine, as they would call it in French, on long wave only. I don't know where that went. Maybe it didn't go anywhere at all. They might have discontinued it. Now you might notice here, if I turn this up, even though there's not a radio station on it, there is a carrier. Although the transmitter has been reduced in power considerably compared to the glory days of uh, France Inter, they have kept the transmitter on at a lower power because it broadcasts an inaudible time signal. And I'm sure I remember reading many years ago that one of the biggest users of that time signal was the SNCF, the French Railways, and that the clocks they had on the station above the platform um, were synced to the correct time thanks to this signal. So... That may still be true today, it may not be, but either way, enough people use it for the powers that be to consider it worth keeping the transmitter switched on. Now, leaving aside the philosophical rights and wrongs of transmitting a time signal in a broadcast band, I would have thought that if you were going to go to the expense and trouble of maintaining a transmitter, the actual mast itself, and the transmitting unit, then you might as well increase the power up a little bit and broadcast a radio station on top of it. Um, but they've decided not to. Um, if propagation is right, you may very occasionally find um, some audio superimposed on this carrier. That comes from RTL on 234 kilohertz, and that's thanks to the so-called uh, Luxembourg effect. The next frequency up, 171, is Morocco. I have only heard this station very, very occasionally at home. And again, I would say it is detectable rather than listenable. One of the things that stops me hearing it after dark is that we have a Sony Bravia TV set uh, that my late parents bought in 2007, 2008, somewhere like that. And um, that puts out interference on several spot frequencies all the way up to about 500 kilohertz. Unfortunately, the strongest one coincides exactly with 171 kilohertz. So seeing as the TV is often on in the evening, it would be very hard for me to listen to Morocco. Um, over top of that noise but uh, again it's not a strong signal with me in the south of the UK 
There's going to be a little edit here because I think my battery is about to go flat standby. So now we go up to 180 kilohertz and I have never heard anything on this frequency. The main reason being that there were two stations, both of which have now closed on 177 kilohertz and 183 kilohertz. And you know the saying, you'll always get exceptions that prove the rule. Well, here's a good example. 177 kilohertz was Deutschlandfunk from Germany. 183 kilohertz was Europe number one. I never really listened to Deutschlandfunk for two reasons. Number one, I spoke less German then than I do now. Not that I speak a lot of it these days, but uh, I certainly spoke less then. Uh, when Deutschlandfunk was on the air. Second reason that all across the medium wave broadcast band there were lots and lots of German local stations that came in and some of them were almost as strong after dark as a local station. Uh, the one on 756 kilohertz from the north of Germany I think and I'm going from memory, please correct me if I'm wrong. After dark, that was at the strength of a local station. So if I wanted to listen to some German, I would have gone to the medium wave. On 183 kilohertz was Europe 1. Now they closed down a year or two back. In the months prior to their closure, they turned the transmitter off for a couple of weekends probably to test the reaction and they probably had so few people contact them that they decided to turn it off permanently. Of course something to bear in mind that is that um, the number of, if if you do something the number of people who notice that you've done it and the number of people who notice you've done it and then take the time and trouble to contact you to tell you that they've noticed that you've done it can be two very different things. But I think Europe One have been wanting to leave Long Wave for a very long time. As far as I know, there were never any differences between the FM um, broadcast and the long wave broadcast. There may have been opt-outs years and years ago but certainly in the time since I've been listening there wasn't. But I lived in France during the 1998-99 academic school year and there was an FM transmitter for Europe One uh, in the actual town where I was living and at about midnight or one o'clock in the morning they would transmit a message on FM and long wave that said words to the effect of um, Dès que maintenant, from now onwards, Europe 1 s'écoute seulement en FM. Europe 1 can be listened to only in FM. And then invited you to retune. In those days we didn't have online streaming to the extent we do, so that wasn't mentioned. So the message was basically... From now on, retune to FM. They didn't say, or if you want to stay on long wave, we'll switch the transmitter on at six o'clock in the morning again. The way the message was phrased, it kind of inferred that the transmitter had shut down for good. So I think even back as far as the late 90s, Europe One were looking to move away from long wave. And the fact it carried on until... Oh, I don't know, 2019, 2020, whenever it was. That is a lot longer than I was expecting it to last. 189, oh, I've jumped a bit here. 189 and 207 are Iceland. 189 is Reykjavik. 207 is a transmitter in the east of the country. I think that the two long wave outlets carry the same program. Again, I've only heard this after dark or at dusk or at sunrise. Sometimes 189 is stronger, sometimes 207 is stronger. Doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason, but I would say that both of them are, despite being weak signals, both of them are listenable rather than really detectable. And because I am line of sight, 100 plus miles north of where I am when I'm at home 
I will be interested to see later if I can hear um, either of those frequencies, Iceland on either of those frequencies, better here than I can down on the West Sussex coast. The next frequency, 198 kilohertz, is the one that people in the UK will listen to if they're going to listen to long wave. That is BBC Radio 4. Radio 4 is on the air from 20 past 5 in the morning local time through until 1 o'clock in the morning local time. Outside of those hours they relay the BBC World Service and I think they relay it live. If you look on the BBC website what they actually say is a, um, that they are broadcasting a selection of World Service programmes but I don't think they are just choosing random programmes from the World Service archive and broadcasting them. I think they are simulcasting the BBC World Service in real time. And if you watch the video that Walt uploaded when he gets to 198 kilohertz, it's actually the World Service that you're hearing rather than Radio 4. Now, I hope 198 keeps going for a long time. The BBC have talked about discontinuing all AM broadcasts no later than the end of 2027. I could wonder if they'd be able to do that with Longwave. Um, partly because, as with France Inter on 162, there is digital um, switching data using PSK phase shift keying superimposed on the signal which is inaudible to the usual listener to the uh, to the everyday listener but i think even now that is still used by some electricity meters to switch from the cheap overnight economy 7 rate onto the daytime rate the second thing is that even now there is quite a lot of opt out programming on the long wave frequency. At half past eight on weekdays they broadcast yesterday in Parliament which is a repeat of today in Parliament from the night before. From 9.45 till 10 they have the daily service which I think is the I think I'm right is the saying in saying is the longest running broadcast in the UK and perhaps of most interest to most people when the cricket is on uh, 198 opts out for test match special for hours and hours and hours of cricket commentary. Uh, for sailors there are also a couple of shipping forecasts that are only on long wave. One of them just after midday uh, during the week and the other one uh, just before 6 o'clock in the evening during the week. The remaining forecasts are uh, carried on um, FM as well. So if long wave closed, I don't know what would happen to those. How many sailors and mariners gen gen genuinely still use them these days with all the satellite technology that's available, I wouldn't really like to say. Um, cricket could be a, a bigger thing. Um, as it is, they network it, simulcast it on Radio 5 Sports Extra, but that isn't available in analogue, so you need a DAB digital radio or an internet connection. And people may be going to a cricket match who want to have a small, lightweight, discreet radio in their pocket, won't necessarily um, have a DAB digital radio. And um, yes, of course, you can do it on your phone, assuming you can afford in these hard times to have um, an expensive contract with unlimited data. Uh, if you're on pay as you go, uh, it might cost a bit more. And last but not least, if heaven forbid there were ever to be a nuclear war in this country, it is reputed that one of the ways that the commanders of submarines could work out if the UK still existed and had a functioning society would be to check if Radio 4, which is like the BBC's flagship national programme, um, it's during the war it was the home service, so it's 
sort of the one national station above all other that the BBC would keep going if um, everything else was crumbling around us. And if they were going to check that it was still on air, they would probably try checking long wave rather than FM or DAB. And yes, I know long wave is antiquated technology. Yes, I know that the uh, electricity cost is very expensive and that the upkeep is very expensive. But on long wave, the UK is covered by three transmitters. Two of them are in Scotland at Burkhead and Wester Glen at 50 kilowatts apiece. The third one is at Droitwich in England at 500 kilowatts. If you're listening to Radio 4 on long wave anywhere in England or in continental Europe, France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, wherever, you are almost certainly listening to the Droit, White, Droit Witch transmitter. If you compare that, those three transmitters, to the dozens that you need, well, almost a hundred probably, many dozens of transmitters at FM and well over a hundred at DAB because as you go higher in frequency you need more transmitters to cover a give, given area. Um, yes, okay, a lot of them are local um, low-powered relays but they still need maintenance spending on them, they still need site rent paying on them. So if you look at it that way, one massive great transmitter that costs a lot to run in the middle of the country more or less is probably not too bad value for money so i hope it carries on as long as possible and even unforeseen events um the queen when she passed away there were several days in the aftermath of that when the prince of wales as he was king charles as he now is visited the nations scotland wales northern ireland and for each of those um, unforeseen events a couple of weeks back, Radio 4 Longwave opted out for coverage of those events with the regular programming continuing on, on FM. So I think it would be a great shame if the BBC did ever close it. And it's always reassuring to have something like that as a plan B backup. I'm always very worried in life in general about putting all your eggs in one basket and to put all our eggs in the basket of FM and DAB and the internet. Um, we know the internet can go down. We know that FM can be jammed or blocked and we, we've got a perfect example in this house where I'm <laughs> sitting now. So to have long wave going as a backup is very reassuring, I think. So that's 198. Uh, 207 is Iceland, 216 up until a year or two back was Radio Monte Carlo. Um, again they weren't a massively strong signal here, I tended to hear them after dark rather than during the day. It's unlikely that that frequency will ever be reactivated but I say unlikely rather than impossible because the transmitter itself and the ground that it stands on does not belong to Radio Monte Carlo, RMC. It belongs to the government, I think, or if it doesn't, it's some other private enterprise. And the transmitter and all the facilities are still there, for now anyway. So if an organisation came along and said, here's some money probably quite a lot I would guess, here's some money, turn the transmitter back on, we want to broadcast our radio station to the population, then it would come back on, I guess. And it's not entirely out of the question that it could be reactivated either for special events or anniversaries or short-term broadcasts if something happened where... They needed long wave coverage for some reason. I'm sorry, this has gone out of focus, hasn't it? I do apologise. So 216, probably quiet for good, but uh, hopefully not, not forever. See if I can get this back in focus. There we go. 225 is Poland. And again, this is not one that's particularly strong. 
I tend to hear it after dark, if I'm going to hear it at all when I'm at home. I don't listen to it because I don't speak Polish apart from anything else. But I know that this transmitter is widely received with good reception in Ukraine. And I know that Polish radio have been broadcasting uh, news bulletins, if indeed not entire programmes, in Ukrainian on that frequency. So if they were ever tempted to turn it off and dismantle it, I bet they're very glad that they didn't. So yeah, can't say much about that one. 225 is Poland. 234 which is weaker here than it is at home that is RTL Radio Tele Luxembourg from Luxembourg now um, in years and decades gone by they were a very strong signal possibly up in the megawatts league in latter years they have reduced power considerably during the day and have reduced it even further at night and in fact, since I think about May 2022, they've actually been turning the transmitter off at night in order to save electricity, which I don't think is a bad move because um, reception can be very distorted after dark. I remember in, in the 90s trying to get a, a good signal to listen to the music programmes on RTL and there was often loads of fading and, and distortion. So switching it off at night I would think is no loss particularly and as I say Europe number one have been doing it for years before they closed down so I could wonder how long this is going to stay on the air having said that though I have read on various websites that um, RTL are quoted as saying that they are very aware that a lot of people still do listen on long wave because if you think of the um, coverage areas where people are likely to listen you've got the Alps you've got the Pyrenees you've got the mountainous regions in uh, Switzerland in the French speaking part there may very well be areas even if um, officially RTL is present on FM and I don't know how comprehensive their FM network is even today because they're a private station they don't have the comprehensive FM coverage that France Inter did for example so if that's true they are perhaps more minded to stay on long wave than some other stations that have closed down but um, if I was placing bets for stations that are likely to go off air sooner rather than later I would suspect that RTL may well be one uh, really good station though if you speak French if you don't they have quite a lot of good music on there particularly programs introduced by the legendary French broadcaster Georges Lang um, who plays a lot of English music um, he's very much into Americana um, country music but also rock and roll music from the 60s 70s 80s that kind of era and he talks in a very low sort of rough voice he talks a bit like this uh, which is not a good impression George I do apologize uh, if you're listening so now we've come to a very interesting frequency and this is one that I'm glad that Walt managed to capture some audio from in his video including a very very nice interval signal uh, probably the only station that actually plays interval signals on long wave 243 is Denmark radio the first thing that sets them apart is that they are by far the lowest power broadcaster on the band only 50 kilowatts 50 kilowatts the other thing that sets them apart is that they are on the air for only a few hours per day. In fact, there are far more hours in the day that they're not on the air than uh, when they are. And those times that they are on the air are not continuous blocks. They'll switch the transmitter on for an hour in the morning. They'll turn it off. They'll switch it on for a couple of hours around lunchtime. They'll switch it off. They'll turn it on around tea time. They'll switch it off. They'll turn it on in the evening. They'll switch it off. Um, I don't have a schedule for exactly when they do it. Um, I did catch them yesterday morning uh, about 7 o'clock. So just after it was getting light. I'm filming this on the 20th of September 2022, incidentally. 
and the signal here was actually stronger not by much but enough to be noticeable than the signal that I receive at home which did surprise me a little bit because I would have thought line of sight at home I would be closer than here but um, certainly 243 kilohertz if, if you are well away from Denmark or if you are in the United States for example and you want to go for a bit of extreme long wave DXing then that is the station to go for it will be really really difficult to receive it for the reasons that I've just mentioned and um, in the notes below I will include um, a video on the Oxford shortwave log channel where uh, Clint there recorded the interval signal for about 10 minutes one morning a while back and it is absolutely lovely if you're stressed out and want a, a nice little tune to relax to then you could do a lot worse than listen to that 252 George Berkeley as we say you might tell us a little bit more about him first of all now that is RTE Radio 1 from the Republic of Ireland on the air 24 hours a day. Listeners with a long memory may remember that from 1989 through to about 2002 there was a legendary station on there, Atlantic 252, where they were running the transmitter at, well goodness knows what power, but many many hundreds of kilowatts and um, it put a good signal into my location on uh, the south coast of the UK. In more recent years they have dropped the power considerably and I think they drop it further still at night. The service was slated for closure in about 2019. There were protests particularly from Irish communities living in the UK who uh, relied on 252 kilohertz as a way of staying in touch with home. Not only did they re uh, reprieve the, the service and uh, delay their uh, close down date, and I don't know if there is a close down date at the moment. Um, if there is, it could well end up being delayed again as before. But not only did they do that, they also did a lot of maintenance on the transmitter mast itself which you could perhaps interpret as being a good sign in terms of um, the service continuing for a few years yet. The big problem with 252 kilohertz is that Algeria with their French service Chin Trois, are also on this very same frequency. At the time of recording they are either off air or they have dropped the power considerably I think when Algeria are going full pelt they're somewhere close to 2 megawatts so despite being on the north coast of Africa they put a tremendous signal into the south of the UK and RTE Radio 1 here would be virtually unlistenable and I suspect if the station in Algeria were on air right now we would not be receiving anywhere as near a good a signal on 252 kilohertz as we do. We're asking to engage and reflectively. 261 kilohertz, I never remember hearing anything on at all, ever. There is a video on YouTube which I will put a link into where, and I'm assuming it's not fake, where a pirate radio station in the Netherlands somehow managed to put a signal out and play music on 261 kilohertz. How the hell they did that with any type of efficiency is beyond me because even on that frequency a half wave dipole would be over a kilometre long or two thirds of a mile long getting that up in the air or, or even a vertical um, how you would do it I, well I mean it, it would go way beyond anything I could do um, in terms of getting the antenna up in the air or if it was a vertical you would probably need so much loading on it that you would need to stuff um, industrial amounts of power into it because it would be so inefficient but assuming Assuming this is not fake, 
261 kilohertz possibly is or was the home of a Dutch pirate but I never heard it here in the UK and I would be very surprised if I ever managed to pick it up on this. 270 kilohertz until earlier this year was uh, Radio 1 from the Czech Republic. Regrettably they closed it down. I think they may have physically demolished the masts now. Um, they closed down overnight I think. they In recent years certainly they weren't on the air 24 hours. Um, after the Ukraine invasion started I did wonder if maybe they lived to regret it because I would think from the Czech Republic you could probably get um, a decent signal into parts of Ukraine at least particularly at high power however um, Romania on 153 and Poland in particular on 225 were probably well placed to do that service and last but not least the very top of the band 279 kilohertz years and years ago a few times I think I detected a weak Russian station or Russian uh, speaking station I should say on there but that was only once or twice and it was barely detectable and um, all long wave and medium wave transmitters in Russia have closed down many many years ago anyway although completely off topic I think some of the ones uh, that are located in Ukraine on medium wave have been reactivated in uh, recent months so like I say it's always worth keeping the masts and the antennas and the transmitting equipment serviced and ready to go even if you aren't regularly turning it on because something completely unforeseen and unforeseeable could happen at a moment's notice and you might find yourself very very glad that this old obsolete technology that you thought would never be used ever again could suddenly come in very useful. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you found it informative um, it's a shame I wasn't recording this 10 years ago because if I had been recording this in 2012 rather than 2022 there would probably be getting on for twice as many broadcasters still active on this band. Thanks for watching and for your patience and enjoy the rest of the video. And uh, thanks once again to Walt for the inspiration for this by making the video on his coastal waves and wires YouTube channel which I highly recommend but I think um, you know the mistake that happened that's where we leave p.m. on 198 long wave the program continues on FM it was presented by Evan Davis studio direction was by Matt Dean the editor was Fran Doherty now on BBC Radio 4 the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1725 on Wednesday the 21st of September the general synopsis at midday. And looking further ahead to Friday and the weekend, mostly dry days with the odd shower in store. And that's the forecast. Have a very good evening. now in shame again. The US President Joe Biden has said Russia's war in Ukraine is about extinguishing the country's right to exist as a state and as a people. So it's a couple of minutes to six local time. I'm holding the camera 
a reasonable distance away from the radio because I don't want the radio to pick up too much interference. And I'll start at the top of the band, 279 kilohertz. Incidentally, as with medium wave, the, the antenna is a ferrite bar inside the radio. So nothing there. Nothing on 270 or 261. Two five two is Ireland. Mild, the temperature is now falling below nine to thirteen degrees. And tomorrow it'll be a mostly cloudy and humid with some sunny spells to start the day. That's a huge signal compared to what I get at home. Uh, two four three probably isn't even on the air at the moment. Nope. Two three four Luxembourg. Oh, they're doing the weather as well. 225 Poland. Nothing. 216, nothing on there anyway. The interference you can hear is probably the camera. Breakthrough on 207 from 198 maybe. To start this week on becoming part of Russia. Two railway worker unions have announced further strike dates for the 1st and the 5th of October, potentially affecting the Conservative Party conference and the London Marathon. Very strong signal from Radio 4, um, several points stronger than I get on here at home. I mean, it's perfectly listenable at home, but the, the signal here is stronger still. ...high-speed rail network, which makes setting foot on its land without permission a contempt of court. The government is to look again at its plans to privatise Channel 4. Oh, that's a bit of good news. Um, 189 kilohertz Iceland. Nope. Nothing on 180 anyway. I would be amazed if we could hear Morocco from here during daylight hours that much further north. That, that's the uh, time signal. from France and nothing from Romania so it's now after dark at nearly half past eight local time Romania is just about detectable on 153 but not really listenable And there's more interference on that frequency from the camera than would be the case if I wasn't holding it. Similar for Morocco on 171. I can just about hear something, but again, it's not really listenable. And the noise that you can hear on that frequency is um, the radio picking up the camera, basically. Uh, nothing on 189 or 207 from Iceland. 225 from Poland. has got music on it um, it's starting to come in again with some interference from the camera not too strong but uh, I would say listenable and it may fade in after as um, the evening wears on 252 mostly Ireland We're hearing on the good old-fashioned steam wireless did this job. but if I turn it round you can also hear Algeria as well I don't know how well you could hear that, but there was a French voice underneath it. Um, I think Algeria is on reduced power at the moment. Um, if it was at full power and if I was down on the south coast rather than in the middle of England here in Nottingham, then Algeria would almost certainly reign supreme on the frequency and it would be very difficult to null it out and listen to RTE Radio 1. 
Apart from that, everything else is the same. RTL from Luxembourg is about the same strength after dark as it is during the day. And that is a lot weaker here in Nottingham than it is at home on the south coast. OK, I hope you've enjoyed this video, particularly if you've sat through it and watched the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.